Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about TV tropes, specifically TV tropes related to queer characters. This video topic was suggested by Starlight216, yes, 216 on a previous video I made. I'm always open to suggestions and I always try to make videos about them if I can, if I know what you're talking about. My cat just... <laughs> And of course you have to get out now, don't you? Hi, little tiger. Say hi. Say hi, little tiger. <gasps> Eventually. So, let's go back to the video. First of all, I would like to say that yes, the position of the LGBTQ plus um, community has dramatically improved in the latest years, specifically in TV. Since the end of the 90s, some shows have started to include gay characters, although representation doesn't necessarily mean good representation. And there were also a few shows dedicated to queer characters with more complex plot lines, including personal favorites, Queer as Folk, and When Worked. However, television continues to kill off its queer characters, specifically its female queer characters, reinforcing the idea that non-straight people can't, or even worse, shouldn't be happy. This phenomenon is so common that it even has a name. TV tropes call it dead lesbian syndrome. This tendency is similar to what the website also calls bury your gaze, in which LGBT characters are more likely to die than their heterosexual counterparts. Today we will look at this trope, we will see what it means and where it stems from and exactly why it is still this relevant in 2018. <laughs> First of all, let's start by saying that not all queer deaths fall into this trope. It's not that a gay character shouldn't die. As TV trope says, sometimes gay characters die in fiction because in fiction sometimes people die. This isn't an if-then correlation and it's not always meant to teach us something or indicative of some prejudice on the part of the creator. The problem isn't when gay characters are killed off. The problem is when gay characters are killed off far more often than straight characters or when they're killed off because they're gay. To this, I would also like to add that a problem definitely arises when these deaths serve no specific purpose to the plot or when their deaths main purpose or sole purpose is that of furthering the main narrative and plot line of a central straight character, usually male. For example, on Supernatural, the popular lesbian character Charlie Bradbury was killed by a neo-Nazi and dumped in a bathtub, only to give Dean Winchester, the central heterosexual character, reason to go on a murder spree and catalyze the action of the season finale. In Chicago Fire, Leslie Dutt, while fighting a fire, didn't contribute in any way to the show's overall plot, but it did fuel the angst and arctic scenes for the best friend, the show's main heterosexual male character. Likewise, in comparison to the other deaths in the show, Maya's death in Pretty Little Liars has no connection to the actual mysteries of the show whatsoever. In PLS, whose nourish genre had people questioning who was A, and characters died mainly for their associations or lack thereof with said character, Maya was killed by a jealous ex-boyfriend. That's it. It's also worth noting how no other leading male love interest of the other three girls in the show has ever been killed. Although PLL often played with near-death encounters, Ezra, Toby, and Caleb have remained the constant companions of Arya, Spencer, and Hannah. Emily, on the other hand, perhaps the most stable of the liars, has been involved with several women throughout the six seasons of the show. Her queerness seems to be the only reason as to why her relationships have been treated to a different standard than those of her heterosexual friends. In The Hundred, instead, Lexa's death did serve to tie in certain plot lines and reveal questions previously set by the show. Likewise, some defend this choice by saying that Finn, Clark's previous love interest, has also been killed. However, Lexa's death still portrays a lot of issues typically associated with the dead lesbian syndrome trope. First of all, Lexa was a commander and a warrior and a pretty strong one at that. She could have died in war or in any other heroic way. Instead, she took a bullet while walking through a door. Stray bullets seem to be one of the preferred way to kill off queer women on television. It also happened to Tara in Buffy the Vampire Slayer and to Root in Person of Interest. Secondly, Lexa's death 
came immediately after she had sex with Clark, reinforcing the old age stereotype of punishing off queers for their deviant sexual drive. Not to mention that fans of the show typically ship Clark with either Lexa or Bellamy. Now Lexa is clearly out of the picture, so the main lesbian couple can have its happy ending. This is relevant because it plays in another pretty common stereotypes when it comes to representation of queer couples, female queer couples on screen. Dorothy Snaka find out that only 16 queer women couples have ever been given happy endings in the entire history of English language television. The importance of positive LGBTQ plus representation in youth targeted shows like The 100 is based on the benefits highlighted by several research in terms of the development of self-esteem, identity formation, and the coming out process for queer teens. This observational learning of mainstream media and TV series aimed at a young audience can shift young people's perceptions according to whether their model of reference is rewarded or punished for their behaviors. The media stereotype of continuously killing off queer women even strong ones like Lexa, maybe just after having sex and robbing them of a possible happy ending can be quite detrimental to young queers' self-identification. This is also part of the modern genesis of LGBTQ plus characters. As they are immoral, they can be shown being happy in their immorality. This death, unhappiness and queer equation stems from the early days of American cinema and specifically its censorship practices called the Hays Code, which was in place from the 1930 to the 1968. Since the 1970s, TV started to explicitly portray this equation on screen. For example, in the soap executive suite, a lesbian character chases her love interest into the street only to be run over by a truck. Liron Cohen explains the origins of this type of narrative, explaining that homophobic writers used to do it in the name of restoring social order or as a punishment for a sinful lifestyle. I mean, is there any other possible reason as to why, for example, Senfield decided to kill off his queer character Susan with toxic envelope glue? According to Autostraddle's research, overall, 45% of all queer women in the history of television have died. Of course, some of these characters died as heterosexual characters died. But here, let me introduce to you a very simple concept called disproportionality. If you have 10 straight characters and one queer character, and you decide to kill off one straight character and one queer character, you still have nine straight characters left and zero queer characters left. In 2016, Vox calculated that in that year, of all the TV season's deaths, 10% were lesbian or bi women, but these represented only 2% of all TV characters. Sometimes creators of edgier shows defend themselves by saying that the death of queer characters was simply done out of um, shock value. Nora and Mary Louise that's from The Vampire Diaries seems to fit in this idea. Far from being an important storyline choice, their death was simply used as a way to boost ratings. The show interests on Carter's death weeks before the actual episode aired to get people to tune in to see who would die. The problem is, it's not shocking anymore. If you are a queer character in a known centric gay show like Orange is the New Black or Wentworth or The L Word or Lip Service, I don't know, especially if you just had sex, you're a thinking time bomb. You know what a shocking thing to do would be? To have queer female characters in a couple live and be happy. In The Walking Dead 6th season, Denise died from an arrow through the eye while still in the middle of a sentence. And you're both really good people and if you don't wake up and face your... Carl Grimes was also shot this time by a bullet in episode 9 to the eye, but he obviously survived. Denise, 
dies instantly. Not to mention that in the comics on which the show is based, the Grim Reaper came for someone else, Abraham. He was the one killed off by an arrow. This means that the Walking Dead decided to murder a queer character in the place of a straight one. However, TV doesn't exist in a vacuum anymore. The uses of Twitter and Tumblr, for example, for the cyclical reproduction of emotional responses from fans and for the same fans to voice their opinions through hashtags like Lexa deserve better, they not only displace pain from a previously closed off internal phenomenon to an external and communal one, but they also help creators to understand how and why their choices can be instrumental in reversing this trend going forward.